Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Rachel Williams begins now. Good evening everyone. The fight against cancer in Tasmania has received a boost with new technology to be installed at the Royal Hobart and Launceston General Hospitals. The state and federal governments have joined forces spending $28 million to replace ageing equipment. Annabelle Wilson knows too well the impact cancer has on sufferers and their families. Her husband lost his battle with brain cancer two years ago and says better technology is critical in beating the disease. You know, access to treatment is extremely important for, for the foundation that I work for, Cure Brain Cancer Foundation particularly, but for anyone living with cancer as a whole. Tasmanians will soon have access to the latest treatments. The state and federal government joining forces, pledging nearly $30 million for new oncology equipment. Four high-precision radiation machines, known as linear accelerators, will be installed in the Royal Hobart and Launceston General Hospital. And they're really the workhorse of radiotherapy, which forms a base, the base of one of the standards of care and gold star treatments for people living with cancer. Funding will also go towards improving the treatment process with a new treatment planning system to be installed. Have benefit for patients um, in a more efficient system but also really importantly for the health professionals who work within in it to dispense that treatment more efficiently. Labor has welcomed the announcement but says more work needs to be done. Again, this is not in any way any kind of vision or plan for a health system that Tasmania needs and deserves into the future. The Labor Party will no doubt out again today complaining and criticising about everything we do, including putting more money into our hospital system. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Opposition leader Anthony Albanese touched down in northern Tasmania today. He spent the morning at the Evandale Market, checking out the local produce and meeting with stallholders. One stall in particular caught the Labor leader's eye. Loyalty is about sticking. <laughs> we, waited 40, we waited 43 years. 71 to 2014. Here you go. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> it's the second trip he's made to the state since becoming the opposition leader. After a week of unseasonal bushfires tearing through parts of the state, a cool change kicking in yesterday has brought some relief. The TFS says a band of rain has calmed the situation at the Bluff Road and Glenfern fires, while the Deniston Road fire is also under control. Crews have spent today extinguishing hotspots and assessing damage. Residents in those areas are being advised to visit the TFS website for further updates. More than 250 people walked together in Margate's Bicentennial Park this afternoon for the sixth annual Walk for Brain Cancer. The event raising $25,000 for the Cure Brain Cancer Foundation. It was organised by Labor Senator Katrina Billick, a survivor of the disease. The survival rate is 20% for five years, which is just not good enough. It takes a lot of money to find a cure, but with the great teams we've got behind us, it can be done. Money raised today will be invested in awareness campaigns and medical research. Tasmania's top cricketers with intellectual disabilities have hit the pitch, vying for a spot in the state team. The match was hotly contested, with the north side taking out the Lord's Taverners Shield. Cricketers took to the crease, ready to show off their talent. The state's top batsmen, bowlers and fielders were on their game as selectors kept a watchful eye. It's a really fantastic opportunity for these guys here today. We've got about sort of 25 or so cricketers who are looking and vying for their spot in the state team uh, who go away representing Tasmania um, in January at the National Inclusion Championships. Players travelled across the state for the one-day match. We've seen a, a, yeah, a few surprises. Um, I think a few new guys putting their hand up, a couple of young guys that we've uh, discovered uh, in the Hobart area um, and a couple of new guys from the northwest. So getting a really good statewide representation in the inclusion space, which is fantastic. Alan Dengate has captained the state team for the last three years. So it's been a pretty good experience, really. I've, I really enjoyed it. It's been a challenging one at times, but it's been a really, really positive and, and a good one. In the end, the north side was too strong for the southerners taking out the shield. But despite the rivalry, the day was also about making mates and teamwork. Great bunch of people to play with. Great friends, meet other friends. 
from other clubs. It's a good team team game. I like the t I'm a big team person. I like the team environment. So yeah, the be the team thing is what about it like I like the most. Letitia Wallace, Seven Tasmania News. Tasmanians are being urged to do their bit to conserve water. Taswater is rolling out new advertisements warning locals that using more water than needed places the state at risk of running out. It comes as parts of the state suffer through a prolonged dry spell with many areas experiencing their driest winter on record this year. A visually impaired woman has launched an exhibition in the state's north showcasing her series of floral artworks. Jennifer Phillips suffers from an inherited eye condition, which means she only has some peripheral vision. She's been busy painting these pieces since the end of last year. Sometimes I have some difficulties, but then I work through it and finally I get there. Yes, but it's just flowers. I love flowers. I love nature. I do other things, but I, I can't do the uh, finer things because I have no central vision. So it's just how I see it in my mind. The exhibition's on at Steve's Grill for the next month and all proceeds from the sale of the artworks will go to Guide Dogs Tasmania. Meanwhile, Perns Steam World has unveiled a special exhibition for the long weekend in Westbury. Up to 40 steam engines are on display. The event's so large, the museum can't contain it within its doors, spilling out onto the grass. Some of the engines are well over 100 years old and can take up to two and a half hours to start working. The museum hopes to inspire future generations and preserve historic engines. A string of errors from the Hobart Hurricanes bowlers has seen the side squander a big opportunity against the Sydney Thunder at Burnies West Park today. After setting a winnable total with the bat, the Canes attacked and allowed the match to slip out of reach. Following yesterday's washout, the Canes were keen to put on a show in front of the northwest coast, but it wasn't the start they were after. With a little bit better connection, but straight down the throat of third and fine leg, and the first wicket appears. Driving down the ground, this should be caught straight to deep mid on the easiest of catches. In dire need of something special, English captain Heather Knight set about providing it. She skied that way, way, way east and it's gone over the rope. South African import Chloe Tryon refusing to be outdone. Swings hard, lots of it and over the rope she goes. After racing past 50, Knight was gifted a lifeline on 66. Knight, strong drive. That should be taken at long offer. Through the hands, through the hands of Stellenberg, who is not having a good day in the field. The heavy hitters' innings eventually brought to an end on 77, but Tryon wasn't done just yet, helping to belt the Canes along to a respectable 148 run total. Deep big wicket. No, it's over the rope for six. Lovely strike there from Tryon. She's got that X factor. The side's attack came out hunting for early scalps, but Aussie quick Nicola Carey struggled to find her rhythm. It's wide and it's going to beat everyone. <laughs> That's four wides early on. Thunder slugger Rachel Priest then rubbing further salt in the wounds of the star recruit. Strong blow down the ground by Rachel Priest. That's a six. It's a short boundary. The Canes unable to find a response as Priest continued to find the boundary. Taylor Vermenich drawing first blood for the home side, removing Naomi Stallenberg on six. Young spinner Macy Gibson then providing a glimmer of hope for the Burnie crowd. That's a powerful shot, well caught, very well caught. Tryon unable to hold on to the next one with the opportunity to remove the Thunder's danger woman gone wanting as she went on to make them pay. He's high into the onside, is this going to be a catch? No, it will clear the rope. Priest is right on her game today. Her innings finally brought to a close on 50, but the damage had already been done as veteran Alex Blackwell and young gun Phoebe Litchfield guided the Thunder home for a six-wicket win with two overs to spare. It was pretty comprehensive in the end. In the end it was. The Hurricanes will rue uh, 29 extras in this uh, fielding effort. The Canes now prepare to take on the Renegades in Melbourne next Saturday. An unbeaten 57-run effort from Matthew Wade has guided the Tasmanian Tigers along to a six-wicket victory during the final day of their Sheffield Shield clash with Victoria at Blunston Arena. Needing 108 runs for victory, Wade was on fire with the bat. George Bailey unable to turn back the clock, dismissed on just 10, but it made little difference to the end result as Wade belted the winning runs with a boundary to see the Tigers record their first win of, the Shield, of their Shield campaign. They take on South Australia next, beginning next Tuesday.
Launceston triathlete Jake Birtwistle has sent a big message to national selectors ahead of next year's Tokyo Olympics, with the Tasmanian taking out his second Noosa triathlon today in Queensland. The 24-year-old crossing the finish line in a time of just under one hour and 44 minutes ahead of Olympic bronze medalist Henry Sherman. Bert Whistle was also recently announced as a finalist for the 2019 Tasmanian Athlete of the Year. Welcome back. It was a mostly warm day across the state today. Hobart a high of 22 degrees, Launceston, Burnie and Devonport all reaching 17. 23 was the state's high recorded at Friendly Beaches, 21 the top at St Helens, Ooze and Marah Island reaching 20 degrees, Smithton, Flinders Island 18, 17 on King Island, Lowhead 15 and 13 degrees the top at Lyawini. From a satellite there is a fair bit of cloud covering across Tasmania. Extending out now we can see that cloud band extending across the state as well as Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland. Tomorrow's chart shows a cold front crossing Tasmania with another cold front in the Tasman Sea and extending up the east coast with a high pressure ridge pushing into the bite. On the waters west to northwesterly winds 10 to 20 knots in the south and west early with the seas 1 to 2 metres. No warnings for tomorrow's but there will be plenty of showers across the state. 15 the top in Hobart and Ouse, 14 in Dover. A shower or two across the north, Launceston 18, Devonport 15, 16 the top for Scottsdale, Burnie 14, 13 in Strawn and showers easing for Stanley with 15 and showers increasing in the east, 18 at St Helens and Swansea, 17 in Ross. The UV high sevens across the board. Mostly sunny on the east coast on Tuesday with cloudy conditions in the north and south and showers in the west. Showery conditions across the state on Wednesday and more showers forecast for Thursday with the wind picking up on the islands. Taking a look at the mainland tomorrow, sunny in Perth, showers in Adelaide, a possible storm forecast for Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane and Darwin with a very hot 43 degrees in Broome. And right now it's cloudy across the state, Hobart 14 degrees, Launceston 16 and 14 also in Devonport. Well that's all your news for now, thanks for joining us, have a great week, good night.